What is going on guys? Joy Friends here with Flex Training Systems. Today we're going to be going over your uh, <coughs> questions on Instagram that I asked you guys for um, a couple weeks ago for the big year-end Q&A. Um, a little bit different of a video, probably the most editing you'll ever see in a video just in terms of what's going on, but uh, I'm excited and uh, you know I haven't really looked too much at the questions and uh, <laughs> I'm just going to go through each one. Hopefully, I can answer all of them, and uh, let's get it. Alrighty, so, uh, question number one. The most common cues you can give for the three main lifts. This is from, you know what, I'm not even going to say the names if they're hard, because they're going to pop up on screen, so you guys should be good to go there. Uh, most common cues you can give for the three main lifts. Most common cues... Uh, well, one for everything is stay tight for sure. Um, for squat, uh, I like, uh, I know it sounds weird, but knees forward, hips back. Uh, basically that, that way, um, you know, for me, it kind of helps me make sure that I'm sitting in between my knees and my hips. Like if you look at that bar from the side, you want the bar kind of over, right over the middle of your thigh or maybe a little bit towards the front just to keep everything centered. Um, I mean, there's a million different cues. I'm just going to give you ones that I like that have helped me uh, with bench. Um, I, you know, I, again, staying tight is is uh, really thinking to just squeeze the bar as hard as I can um, and make sure that I try to, uh, again, this is for me, bring my hips to my, like, to my neck or my uh, shoulder blades. Uh, that way I'm just, it really just kind of helps me maintain my arch. Um, so I really like that one. Uh, and then for deadlift, uh, I just really make sure that I don't rush. Uh, I, I take my time and then I flex my abs. Uh, so brace your core, basically. Literally just staying tight. That's like, I honestly don't think about cues too much. Um, cues help people, I think, a lot when you're starting out. But eventually you should get to the point where you don't need to think. Uh, and you can just execute. And I think a lot of, uh, you know, top lifters are at that point. So that's where you want to get to. Uh, next question from Mighty Mush. Uh, how would you find the minimum effective and maximum recoverable volume for particular ad? And then it gets cut off because Instagram doesn't let you post the full thing. Um, so finding minimum effective dose and maximum recoverable volume. All right. So here's the thing. You want to be you want to be doing enough work to where you know you're creating stimulus you can recover from it but you're not overdoing it to where you're building so much of a fatigue debt that each week when you go in you're just kind of like digging and digging and digging and digging you know what i'm saying there are times like especially close to me when uh digging can be a good thing it's like you know kind of like uh your way of um getting some super compensation going but like to the to the degree in which each lifter does that is going to vary from person to person uh me for example i i don't really push it's hard to say like i i don't push myself nearly as hard as i used to just because the returns on doing it minimally um for me are much better but yeah, how do I, how do you find it? It's really just trial and error. It's it's starting out with less and slowly adding more and more uh, over time until you get to a sweet spot or a point where you feel like um, you know you're making progress. Uh, you're not beating yourself too much, and your you know your overall quality of life is like not compromised by you know what you're doing in the gym. Um, I hope that it answers. Maybe maybe not because the second part of your question got cut out. Uh, ben Yanes asks ever play wow i'm assuming that's world of warcraft i have not i feel like everybody has and i'm the only one that hasn't but um you know fortnite keeps me occupied when i have time and uh you know i have a switch i have you know a bunch of little fun games that i play on there so i'm chilling um <clears throat> thoughts ben yates yane same guy thoughts on shiko programming um yeah, I don't know enough about it to be able to give a comment. I do. I, I have seen some of them uh, many years ago, um, but you know what I've gotten from it is just that it's really hard. And you know, there's this theory online that uh, 
back in the day they used to just give people a lot and the ones that survived were the genetic elite and they were gonna they were gonna rise to the top anyway in terms of injury prevention and you know the amount of work they could uh, get through um, that's not my opinion that's just the opinion that I heard uh, but yeah I, I, I really for me personally I, I don't know enough to be able to give a full review on it or anything like that um, I'm not gonna say your name because I don't know how to pronounce it, but uh, Aquaman or Man of Steel. Oh, I gotta say Man of Steel just because I thought the Kryptonians were amazing. They were insane. They were so powerful uh, and menacing. And um, General Zod is probably one of the best, you know, DC villains. Obviously, like aside from the Nolan movies, like General Zod is insane. Like he, I really like that actor. I'm from blanking on his name, but. Uh, Man of Steel was really, really good for me. Uh, even the beginning of the movie um, was was amazing. And uh, I mean, Aquaman was dope, but I mean, shit, man. Man of Steel, goddamn. Importance of isolation adductor work for sumo pullers. I don't think it's very important at all, honestly. Um, like a lot of things. Skip to my Lou. What up, man? How you been, man? Shit, I haven't seen you in like 10 years, dog. What's good, brother? Uh, what do you recommend? Someone battling knee pain. Um, shit, without knowing shit about you, uh, in terms of your lifting, just get out of heels. Don't squat in heels. Um, try uh, doing things in flats, more flat footed work. Try not to do, you know, if you're using, if you're, I'm assuming you're doing like leg extensions and, and bodybuilding stuff like that, like leg, leg uh, machines, like leg press and hack squats. You can lay off of those. Uh, if you're gonna do leg press, you can try putting your feet higher. And basically, you want to keep working your leg without, um, you know, doing things where your knees are gonna go too far over your toes. Although I don't like saying that too much because for some people, it's gonna have to happen. Like there's no way for you to hit depth unless it happens. And it really, you just want to make sure that you're kind of stressing your legs evenly. Uh, and when it comes to squatting and then you know you could just lay off the bodybuilding stuff let the knees kind of catch up and also turn your feet out if I if I do any type of squatting you know with my feet straight it might feel good I might at lighter body weights for sure I would say I feel tighter with my feet straight um, but I will like inevitably like just my left leg is longer than my right leg uh, and I have some other like just imbalances that I was born with and uh, my left knee just takes the brunt of it so I can't, I can't squat my feet straight. It's just, you have to find what works best for you. Um, so yeah, I hope that helps. <laughs> uh, so next question, what is your goal for 2019? I have many goals. I have many goals for 2019. Um, I don't know if I want to get into the personal goals. I mean, you guys will just kind of see it. Um, but I will say that I'm very thankful to be in the position I'm in. Uh, I am very thankful for each one of the you know the people that put their trust and effort in me uh, to get them stronger and get them to where they want to go and I want to uh, just keep pushing that limit I want you know more people on the more flex boys on the podium uh, we want to do good at worlds we want to do good uh, at collegiates I'm gonna I'm gonna total something massive at the Arnold um, you know I'm, I'm just so many things that I want to accomplish and I'm like going to get there. Like I'm literally, I'm there. I just got to do it. You know what I mean? So I got, I got everything there. We're just going to make it happen. Um, that was Eric Mal Maldonado, I believe. I probably screwed that up. But, uh, Tori's Justice, Monster Zero Ultra and ACDC question mark for maximum hype. I mean, we could do one of those and replace the other one with like um that that soundtrack from the avengers endgame you know what i'm saying acdc is dope though shout out to acdc i don't want to hate on anything because acdc is like the ogs that paved the way for those that came in after you know what i'm saying that inspired all the other things and if it wasn't for them we wouldn't even be here you know what i'm saying uh g reyes says what to expect for <clears throat> someone competing in their first meet there's a lot of videos on this online that you could uh, YouTube. Um, literally tons of videos. Just watch like two, any two or three of them that have any decent kind of like likes on it, and it's probably going to be decent. Um, but if I had to give you one thing, I would say keep up on your nutrition timing, meaning 
um, before squat bench deadlift you know make sure you're having some sort of carbs and water and, and that you feel good and that you're not overdoing it on sodium uh, although sodium is very important uh, I feel like I can't overdo it on sodium then again I that's I mean of course you can overdo it but I don't think I've ever overdone it I've always felt pretty good um, this is my trusty 45 ounce bottle with utopian in it shout out novo junior raz is stone what are some common mistakes you see early intermediates make in terms of their programming and then it gets cut off they're not doing enough or they're doing too much and uh yeah that's pretty much it um i mean there's more but you know what was the best card you ever pulled from a Yu-Gi-Oh booster pack uh i don't know dude probably so like every set back in my day had like one or two secret rares that were um, pretty much like the best card in the set or or maybe a super rare you know hyped card or, or something like that uh, I pulled judgment dragon which was at the time uh, you know if you ran three of those bad boys in, in a light sworn deck like he was the most powerful literally three that is a blue eyes white dragon that can blow everything up on the field when you have enough things in your grave and that's pretty lit um yeah that's 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 that uh, uh <coughs> ah man this question right here this one right here will will russ beat gibbs next summer all right so like as russ's coach i'm always gonna side with my guy um so i'm gonna say like yes but i respect gibbs i know gibbs bringing heat i know gibbs is like probably the strongest you know he has like no weakness he has a strong squat strong bench strong deadlift but you guys have been watching the boys. We are coming in hot. Uh, there's gonna be no injuries this time. It's gonna be a different, uh, different situation, and there's gonna be it's gonna be a fight. It's gonna be a big fight. Um, you know, if we keep this momentum up, I think uh, it may be easier than I think. It might be, you know, Gibbs might have some up his sleeve. Who knows? It's gonna be really good. But don't sleep on Sean too, because he's right there. You know what I'm saying? Don't sleep on anyone ever. You gotta always, always head on the swivel. You know what I'm saying? You out there in the field, you could get sniped from any direction. You know what I'm saying? Like, like in the gameplay you're watching right now. Okay, so uh, I don't even know how to say your name, but it'll pop up on screen. How to balance sumo to squat ratio with sh shared fatigue? This is such a good topic. Interference between squat and deadlift, right? I know there's studies been done on this. Um, you know where you know the study pretty much got screwed up because of the interference of the deadlift um, but basically you need to find out how much of that lift like kind of affects your other one like once I really work my deadlifts and I'm if I'm, if I'm kind of cautious with them they're not really gonna affect my squats too much I mean they always will and we always need to kind of accept a certain amount of you know interference so like if you hit if I hit like a 700 squat but I deadlifted like crazy 48 hours before um, you know, I know that once I rest from a meet and I squat, having not pulled for 10 days, which is what I normally do, uh, I'm going to be infinitely stronger on squat. So you, not infinitely, but you get what I'm saying. Like a good amount, like a shocking amount, like on me day, you're like, oh shit, I didn't know I had this, but, um, like, you know, it's coming, but you don't know how much it's going to be. So, uh, how do you balance that? Again, it's trial and error, starting out with like minimal and slowly adding more. Um, not deadlifting all the time for some people like literally you can't be afraid when it comes to programming right major key here and when it comes to programming you can't be afraid to um, try something that you know maybe you haven't heard but logistically or kind of like with the data you have it makes sense um, and yeah uh, just just it might work out and a lot of the times you know like how did I get my girlfriend to bench a day before me and then her ha ha hit PRs on the platform. I just said, hey, you know what? Like everything is saying that this should work. I've never done it before, but I'm gonna try it. And then it ends up working. So um, again, start with less and then work up more. Timmy Peeler, 1v1 me in Fort Noob. You probably don't even play Fortnite. Um, maybe one day if I'm like streaming, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> then, then uh, you know, we'll, you'll jump in there and, and we'll do it for fun and you can kick my ass. I'm more of like a team guy, more of like a positioning a solo dude. I, I have good aim from far distances. I'm getting better uh, close range, but my editing uh, is, is I would say like a three out of 10 when it needs to be like a 10 out of 10. Are you ever going to release a book or podcast talking about flex training philosophy? 
Man, it's funny that you should say, uh, there is a book coming out on January 3rd that I am affiliated with. It has a lot of the fundamentals and basics that I am um, talking about here. I will be, I'll make its own dedicated video for that. And, uh, you know, I am, I'm really excited to share it with you guys. It's got pretty much everything in there. Everything that you need to be a better athlete and to, if you're trying to coach someone, uh, just kind of have like the Bible, the groundwork, like your, your foundation, right? And then you can kind of add on top of that um, or, or, or interpret it how you will. And, uh, you know, kind of just go from there. Sorry, I'm looking for my tissues. Uh, goddamn, but we ain't pausing this. Um, so, yeah, stay tuned for that. January 3rd. Uh, tell, you, tell everyone. Uh, <clears throat> your squat looks slow in the beginning of the negative, then accelerates. Why do you... Dot, dot, dot. Why do you do this? Um, I do that because initially when you break, when you go from like completely locked out with your knees and then you break at your hips and knees, there's like some motion in the bar, right? The bar starts doing this, all right? And when and that little that little pause that I do is just to kind of let let that slow down, so that way as I'm going into the hole, I'm not I'm not you know doing this. You know what I'm saying we're just straight down and up, down and up. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> We want to go down, hit the hole, and come right up. It's just control. I cannot stress control in the squat enough. Especially when you get up to 600 as a small guy, or 650, and then 700, and even more than that if you're a bigger dude. you got to control that weight. Physics become a limiting factor, um, you know, more so than people think. I think the higher you get, you can be super strong, but when you have a lot of physics going on, it can throw you off. Do you use any percentage? in your coaching or just RPE exclusively. So like RPE, right, is if you had a machine that would just tell you what your max is on the day, I know there's some sort of technology out there, I think, or you could take a single and then do it based on that, uh, do an RPE based on that for the day. Um, the, like percentages like goes hand in hand with it. We just don't focus on it. Uh, and it is something maybe down the road when you're picking numbers, if you don't really have the experience that you can use um, but you know really RPE and percentage based training is literally just like a way of interpreting uh, like it's a way for me to tell my lifter what I want from them but the thing about RPE is it's variable whereas um, percent I mean percentage is variable too meaning your percentage of your max on that day is gonna change but I just don't like the idea of people like pounding their head against the wall with a certain weight then again to omit any method can be limiting meaning percentage based work might work for some people um but i've always been of the uh you know kind of mindset that i can teach someone how to use rpe and be better at it uh versus just you know um you know just just telling them what to do and then like even if no matter what if i give someone percentages i could be guessing like on how strong they're going to be on that day because training can say one thing, but their life can say another thing, and then they end up overdoing it, and they get beat up, and then we don't want that. So, yeah, brothers. Uh, next, your name is actually cut off here, um, so I apologize. Would you offer a group coaching someday um, for a lifter? It is cheaper, or like a cheaper way to get coach, maybe group coaching. If I did, I would probably have to find someone extremely competent that wanted to kind of help me do it because I have like no time <laughs> when it comes to like my own coaching. Like I pretty much have an infinite number of emails I need to go through at all times and I have, you know, just the team that I need to manage and that like to add anything else more coaching related aside from like passive income, like anything that requires my attention is going to be hard. Um, you know, so at the same time, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to, if I only work, I will lose my mind and I will start to degrade my, um, my like effectiveness. Uh, that's why, you know, we, I play video games to like kind of even things out or maybe we're going to hike or do something else. Uh, I watch movies because my life is so much powerlifting that, um, you know, I have to do other things to kind of like keep that train going. You know what I mean? So. Um, 20 minutes in here, uh, basing programming off numbers of number goals or more of a bottoms up approach. I don't like focusing on numbers. I don't like, you know, fixating or just kind of like, I need to get this number, but it is good in the back of your head to kind of, uh, you know, 
have a goal and have like an idea of where you want to be or what you want to get to. How to avoid overthinking technique. Okay. If you don't hurt in the movement, right? And there's no wasted motion, right? Like you're not going, you're squatting down and your hips are kicking back and then you're coming up. You're just kind of going down and up, right? At least the bar is, right? And you have no pain and you're able to progress that way. You're probably good, right? You can always get better. You can always fix little things. But if I were to fuck with my technique now, I think I would only get worse. You know what I'm saying? So right now, like I keep it, I keep it locked. And, and uh, you know, if it's working, accept that it's working and just move on. You don't need to like, Fix it if it's fucked up. It, you, you need to fix it if it's fucked up, but if it's not fucked up, you don't need to go in there and screw it up. Not a question, but a fact. Uh, Mikey D is coming for all the 105s next. We want all the smoke. I mean, goddamn, man. Oh, shout out to Mikey. Of course he is. Uh, that was Say No More Johnny. I think that's your homie, right? The one that comes with us. Timmy's and stuff. Uh, how was the face stay in the pocket born? Um, I think many moons ago i was watching a patriots game or talking about a patriots game and uh i think i heard Berto say it one time and then i just never stopped saying it <laughs> shout out to the ogs right you know what i'm saying uh here we go getting close to the end changes you'd make to powerlifting as a sport <sighs> well see here's the thing um i've competed at the arnold for four years no this will be my fourth year I think this will be my fourth year. And that meet is pretty much like the, uh, maybe like a prime time session too. The pinnacle of like, just in terms of the meet is extremely fast. Um, the production is on point. There's like not ever any mistakes. You don't, I only compete at meets where like, it's ran by like the heads, right? So we're not gonna have any little issues here and there. And I don't really have any complaints. I don't, uh, you know, there's nothing that I would go in and be like, fuck, I wish we had this or I wish we had that. Um, you know, I, you get your stuff done and, um, I just, I, I guess what I would change is try to do whatever you need to do to make the meets more like the Arnold. So if you, they need to be more exposed or something like that, um, you know, do that. There's another question here. I'm not really sure. I'm not really too sure how to answer it. I'm not, you know, a doctor or anything, but how can I manage depression and lifting? Um, uh, you got to, I would say, just remind yourself of the things that are important to you in life. Um, remind yourself of what you want from lifting. Uh, and maybe if you are depressed while you're lifting, you don't, you don't really like it as much. And you need to find what in life can give you fulfillment. Um, and, uh, you know, don't compare yourself to others. You know, you're on your journey. You're doing your thing. Uh, if you have a thousand pound total, but you're working towards that 1,050 and then that 1,100 and da 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 you know, when you get to a 1300, 1400, 1500 total, you're going to be so much happier, um, you know, kind of rocking your path than like focusing on what other people are doing. Um, but yeah, man, I hope, I hope that helps, uh, you know, oh, and c c come say, come, say, come look at my page, man. Maybe I'll help, maybe help cheer you up, man. And cheer you up. Every, we're going to bring everybody up over here. Uh, where do you see powerlifting in five years? I see insane uh, lifters in every weight class. There's no longer just one top dude or one top female, especially in the female class. That class is going to develop more. It's going to become more competitive. It's going to be just more insane. My dogs are squeaking things and they should stop. Jesus. But yeah, piloting five years, bigger, better, faster, stronger, more athletic, more ripped, or more lean. Uh, you know, just everything times a million. Uh, CCC Campo, uh, I seem to go backwards after I peak. However, I often need to back off to recover. How can I balance dot, dot, dot? Uh, I get what you're saying. Um, well, typically, you know, there's got to be a reduction in volume so that you can kind of peak on meat day and then you're going to be a little bit out of shape, right? You're going to be a little bit weaker. You're going to be... Um, you know, not as, uh, uh, not as, uh, sharp as you were like in the peak of your volume blocks or things like that. Um, but it's temporary. It's not really a big deal. And it's just something that, I mean, I, <coughs> I experienced it. Um, <clears throat> sorry, I'm dying. I experienced it, but it's really not that bad, uh, for me because I just, you know, I don't know. I just, uh, 
Um, I only train, you know, I, I train very infrequently, so like I can kind of go longer with rest without, uh, you know, f feeling these side effects. I do get sore, but it's not nearly as bad as when I used to, like when you're, my body was adapted to squatting three times a week, which I have not done in like years and years and years. Um, you know, if you take any type of day off, time off, uh, then you come back to it. It's like your body recovers at such a high rate, you're gonna like overdo it, and then you you even detrain faster. Um, but you know, it's not it's not a bad thing. It's it's I don't think you should be dealing with you feeling shitty after a peak um, and like compromising your meat day. Like like if it means to compromise your meat day, just you know just peak, dude. Peak, just peak. Hit the meat. Hit the meat, do the meat, and then build back up after. Give yourself enough time between competitions so that you're not peaking so frequently. If you're peaking all the time, it's like, what are you doing, brother? How are you going to make gains? Pan Fried Panda says, how did you get into powerlifting? Competing? Um, I did bodybuilding stuff, but I always trained in, I didn't always train the big three, but I was doing the bench press. And then uh, I noticed that I was pretty good at it. And then my coach who was helping me diet at the time back in, in like 2012 uh 2012 early 2013 maybe um was like hey you should compete you're really strong and uh i saw so i did and then that was it <laughs> i was like this is way this is way better than bodybuilding i don't know at the start all right uh 22 ace what up man uh how do you how much time do you normally spend on mobility warm-up cool down around training zero cool down i just put my cool down is putting the weights away and uh okay so for squat I sit on the ground and I do like, uh, you know, take my, one of my legs and put it behind me and kind of stretch my whole quad. I do the same thing with the other leg. Uh, I'll stand up and grab a bar. Like if, if I'm standing this way, I'll take my hand and turn it like that. And then I grab the bar like that. And then I kind of, you know, stretch all this all the way down uh, into my rectors and stuff. My low back. I do that on the other side. And uh, then I'll do like some, I'll, I'll like go down, uh, sit, and as low as I can in a squat, get my knees really far out. I'm kind of on my, the balls of my feet. And I will grab my ankles, push my knees out, and really just feel everything internally uh, stretch. Kind of more than I would in a squat, right? I, I, I get mobile enough to be able to perform the lift. And then nothing, not really, you know, I don't really go past that. Um, and then I start going one plate, two plate, three plate, four plate, five plate, six plate, seven plate. Uh, and then I start doing my volume. That's pretty much it, man. I don't cool down at all. Um, for bench, I literally, you know, I just lay down and bench, but sometimes I might sit there and like stretch my arms a little bit. Um, <clears throat> if I'm a close grip benching at the, if I'm close grip benching at the time, I can do like no warm up uh, and be good to go. But I do feel better when I do like lat pull downs, very light or uh, face pulls or, you know, maybe super light peg flies uh, before I bench, but I just never do it. Um, you know, just because you know, like I get a minimal gain from it. Uh, the, I don't even know, blonde guy, uh, wants to see, uh, do you want to see Beta Ray Bill make an appearance in the MT with branching out storylines? So, like, everybody likes Beta Ray Bill, right? For those of you that don't know, Beta Ray Bill is, like, another being that was able to pick up Thor's hammer. So, I think Odin was like, damn, dude, you're worthy? Okay, I'm gonna make you your own. And it was, uh, it looks a little different. It's, like, more of, like, a hammer, like, a literal hammer with, like, a sharp back to it vertical uh and he's just like another thor dude um i've seen interpretations of him in cartoons and stuff but he's like like i think it would be dope to see him i mean he's just another overpowered character that's like another good guy but i think we need to always focus on like uh quality villain development and make sure that you know we're using our villains to kind of drive the story forward and giving our static heroes you know for the most part like something to to have to adapt and be and overcome and stuff like that so uh what does fortnite need to truly be at its competitive peak or what is the step in that direction <clears throat> man um i i would say it's in a really good spot right now fortnite's in a great spot i just think that you know i don't like when someone has a plane and they just overpower me. Like I can have full health, full shield, full weapons. Uh, and if they get the right angle and they're coming in on you, there's not really much you can do. So, um, 
I don't know if that's good for competitive play. I think solos are, are pretty dope. Uh, squads are kind of crazy. But, I mean, obviously Fortnite's killing it. They're the biggest game in the world right now. And, um, you know, I think if they listen to their competitive players uh, and kind of, like, may never break away from that formula that got them to where they are, they'll they'll be fine. So, uh, thanks for that question, brother. Um, where can I watch all of Dragon Ball Super English dub? On YouTube, man. I literally just YouTube everything. I YouTube all of it. I, I watched the entire thing on YouTube, like, right when it came out. And, you know, 6 p.m. on Saturdays, I think, my time. Uh, it was on YouTube. So, I just watched them all for free right there. Uh, Juice to Manny says, Thanos car. I don't even know what that meme is. I don't even know what that is. I literally am the Thanos guy. I don't know what that is. Um, what's your stance on sacrificing weight for better technique and training? Do it. I mean, try to get it to a point where there isn't really a difference. You know what I mean? I will never lift maybe on bench you know towards the end i start to get because your setup is going to get taxed the more that you bench uh so you, you start to get a little out of uh, out of your groove but you know i'm not going to ever squat with compromising my technique because i cannot risk an injury right my desire to not get hurt and keep progressing is greater than me trying something heavy once um every time i've squatted 700 pounds i never felt like oh shit i might lose it you know what i mean i just why would i do that um, so I think technique should take priority over lifting heavy. Um, but maybe once in a while, maybe once in a while, like, especially on deadlift, it might be good to kind of push it. Um, because you're, you know, you know, things are going to change. Your back's going to round a little bit, this and that. And you got to kind of feel it once or twice, um, to, to prevent it from happening in a meet. You know, nice guy. Brian says 510, 83 kg should lift or maximize their gains in a weight class before moving up 83, 93. Um, I think you, if you're 5'10", 83, you're probably a 93, man. So, you know, stop comparing yourself to 83s. Make your gains. Most OGs will tell you they made most of their gains, like, when they had periods where they kind of dirty bulked, right? I'm not saying do that. Um, but, uh, just don't be afraid to get bigger and put on more muscle because muscle is like gold. And then once you have it, then you can kind of drop your weight and do, do things like that. Um, but yeah, man, don't be afraid to move up to all you youngins. Don't be afraid to move up. Um, Yeti Grandpa asks if and when do you program beltless, knee sleeveless training for squats? I literally never program knee sleeveless training for squat. Literally never. Like, never. I'm always going to squat with them. I might use a loose one. I'll, I will use a loose knee sleeve right that keeps my knees warm and then on meet day i might go for something a little heavier or maybe i don't feel like it at the at the goddamn what meet was this nationals i didn't i just used my two xls i didn't really care they don't really help that much you know what i mean i mean they help mentally a lot maybe with stability a little bit but uh you know i i think training with no knee sleeves is you know maybe it's something that i should look into but uh i don't i, I seriously doubt it i'd rather i'd rather keep your knees warm and safe and then you know then do go then go without uh i feel like dog shit when i don't use them like i just feel like pins and needles when i don't use them um any plans to come down to texas shit i don't know man it depends uh it depends bro we gotta see what's going on uh if there's a big meet there i'll be there what are some good numbers after five years of training See, I don't know how to answer that because I don't know anything about you, but I would say uh, after five years of training, I would hope you would be hitting like more than what you're hitting now. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Maybe like you add 25% to what your total is over five years. That's like a lower estimate, I would say, you know, but again, I'm just putting out a number. Um, most important non powerlifting thing that, that's happened in 2018 non powerlifting thing that's happened in 2018 um obviously uh avengers infinity war literally the snap thanos destroying half of all life in existence you already knew i was gonna say that because you know me the best lifting belt and thickness hands down uh in my opinion if it doesn't inhibit your setup the spd belt is by far the best belt it's like cheating because if you double lap it you're getting like uh, 30 fucking millimeters you know what I'm saying? But, um, you know, yeah, man. It's really what what belt is going to help you in the lift better. You know what I mean? 
You might like a thin belt for deadlift. You might like no belt for bench. You might like a thick belt for squat. Or you might like no belt for anything. You know what I mean? You got to find what works best for you. I would probably use the belt on squat though at least. Opinions on power building. Like, okay. I'm going to have a podcast where I have uh, a smart guy on. Basically, right? If you guys don't know who he is, Brian Miner. Uh, and we're going to talk about that because they are like so similar. Like, literally they're super similar. I usually train like a power builder, but I, as of late, have just been so busy to the point where I don't, or I don't have the energy to, you know, after I squat 700 pounds, I don't want to go do, you know, bodybuilding stuff. Um, after I go, you know, bench heavy, I'm kind of roasted. I do, I, I am going to train back today, uh, funny you said, should say, but that's more so because, um, uh, you know, I... I'm trying not to be super sedentary, uh, which is like pretty much what I my life is right now. I just I sit here in front of this computer, I do my work, and then I go train, and then I come back to this computer. So, um, but yeah, it's great. I think power building is fantastic. I think you know they go hand in hand. If you're a younger lifter, you definitely want to hit the bodybuilding movements to kind of complement your comp lifts uh, and keep you healthy. So, um, the biggest key for squat gains. Be consistent, don't get hurt, uh, take care of your knees, take care of your body, uh, sleep, um, you know, and and stay in your lane and do your thing and don't worry about what other people are doing. If you had to play Super Smash Bros. Ultimate or Fortnite for the rest of your life, what would you play? I would play Fortnite because I'm way better at that game and, uh, you know, I can do the same map over and over and over and over and over and over. And it's gonna be a different situation every single time, you know, and, and um, there's just so many different possibilities and uh, I honestly really like the game. I know a lot of you guys don't like it um, because the building's really hard uh, and I will say that like if you're a new player and you're going into solos, you're going to get demolished, right? Just play like the 50v50 or play squads with your friends or something. Don't, don't do solos or even duos unless you have homies with you uh, that know what's up. I mean, obviously in solos you can't. But um, yeah, solos are brutal. That's why I try to play the most just to get better. Um, and you know, then I go into squads and I'm like, you know, I'm killing it. You know what I mean? So that's that's pretty much that. Um, hip drive on squats. I don't even know what that. I don't even. I don't even. I don't even know, brother. I don't even know what to say. Uh, hips are better than knees in terms of like just raw power, but we got to use them all. So it's kind of dumb to say that. But you know, if you're gonna use footing that allows you to use your hips. AKA flats and go ahead and do that. But I mean, everybody's different and some people are going to be better in heels, you know, uh, shout out to Amanda Lawrence squatting 585 in heels. There's a, there's an example, uh, recommended shoes for uh, deadlift, sumo conven conversational <laughs> conventional, <laughs> um, recommended shoes. I'm going to say flat, Shoes, flat as, flat as possible, the ones that are gonna allow the best force transfer that are gonna keep you low to the ground. Uh, Flexsmith777 says, thoughts of possible changes you'd like to see in the USAPL IPF. Um, let people kind of compete in whatever fed they want and not get them in trouble for being near people that are on shit, I guess. Um, you know, I don't think it would hurt their numbers at all. I think they would just do whatever is going to make the people say like, damn, you guys are really trying to help the lifter. You know what I mean? The lifter. It should always be about the lifter. Always be about the people that are putting you know money into organization in your lifeblood. Um, you know, just, just stuff like that. And then less restrictions on equipment, I guess, for people that don't have the money to buy all the expensive stuff. Uh, that would be great too. Um, when programming, should the aim to be as to add, when programming should the aim be to add as much volume as you can while still being able to recover? I mean, you want to be doing enough to. I want to is that yes and no. You want to be doing enough to make sure you're again progressing at an appreciable rate while not compromising. You know, like you're not going to be on the brink of injury while you do it. You know what I'm saying? So if that makes sense to you, uh, great. That's what you want to do. Um, there's a little bit more of the question here, but it's kind of cut off. Um, I think you can benefit from progressing with lower, lower volume, uh, and then adding more overtime. So you have somewhere to go versus like just doing all the volume. I mean, you can do all the volume. I mean, I don't want to get too much into it, but there is a way to do it with all the volume. Um, that book that's coming out January 3rd, you guys can cop that and it'll have all that in there. Uh, how often do you use linear progression? 
uh, to program most of your athletes are only RPE. Uh, okay, so for some lifts, I will literally write in the, the weight and just like intentionally hold them back. Um, the conventional delf is a lift, for example, just because like I'd rather be on the safe side guaranteed than like risk it. But most of the time, uh, if I'm giving them enough attention and teaching them, they should be able to do RPE just fine. Um, it's usually when there's an ailment or, a, or an injury we're working around where I need to kind of like, um, you know, uh, hold them back or intentionally like give them, give them specific numbers. Would you recommend a seven or more micro cycle? Uh, currently having a lot of success with a 12 day cycle. Hey man, if, again, if, you're, if what you're doing is working, just keep doing it. Um, but yeah, I mean, seven can work, anything, four can work. Three can work, five can work, whatever whatever works for you. Um, second year training, I've suddenly got a huge interest in powerlifting and bodybuilding. Any tips on, I'm just gonna make up the question because I got cut off staying focused, uh, <laughs> staying consistent. Um, yeah, man, just keep going to the gym. Keep going to the gym. Uh, surround yourself with people that are into it. You know, follow pages that are into it. And uh, you know, Listen to your body, don't get hurt, all that good stuff. Uh, last question here. Could you go over differences of your approach to programming sumo versus conventional? Conventional is a highly invasive lift that has the potential to squat, to tax the squat and the bench. Uh, clearly it taxes, you know, the back and things like that. Um, it takes more recovery. Most people are not gonna be able to handle con multiple days of conventional deadlift. I'm about to sneeze. Whereas uh, the sumo deadlift is more like a squat, it's a partial range of motion, so you can get away with doing it more frequently. It's also more technically uh, demanding, meaning uh, you need to um, you know, practice the technique and make sure that you're losing balance and your grip is right and all these other things are in, in line. Uh, so generally, the conventional deadlift, you, know, you do it once a week, you're good to go, maybe twice. You don't need to do more than that. Sumo can be anywhere from one to three times a week, depending on the lifter depending on how much interference there is with their squat and their deadlift. Uh, you know, if their squats are taxing the shit out of their deadlifts, then maybe you should spread them out and only do the, the deadlift, you know, like as needed. Um, so a lot of the time with uh, squats, if that's progressing and deadlift is kind of holding as squats progress, when you taper everything down, deadlifts are gonna come up too. Um, so, you know, people, just don't need to fixate so much on like, oh, my deadlift isn't moving. No, it's moving. If your squat's moving, you got to think of them as like training muscles and body parts rather than like just a lift. So, um, all, again, guys, coaching questions, like, you know, personally, like coaching price and stuff like that, just shoot me an email. Shoot me an email or flextrainingsystems.com. And I'm saying, go in there, peep the new website, boom, bang, uh, we in there. Um, yeah, guys. Uh, there were a couple questions I didn't get to or I just omitted, um, but I hope you know you guys are satisfied with that uh, Q and A. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. It was a little bit different, um, but uh, you know I yeah, I'm recording off of a webcam in uh, you know mildly decent quality uh, in my room, and uh, yeah, I mean you know uh, I hope you guys enjoyed. Obviously, you know a little bit different of a video. Uh, 2018 was an amazing year. Um, I like literally every year just keeps getting better and better and better and better and like, you know, just like a new high, new high of life, new high of life. So it's I'm really excited for the future. Uh, and then and then once you know I accomplish some of these big goals, I'm gonna kind of switch gears a little bit and think about more to like giving back, more to like giving you guys just more content that's like helpful. Um, mainly you know not on instagram just because i have a thing with instagram but uh you know anyway i'm rambling now if you made it this far <laughs> let me get a hashtag uh something with 2018 in it let's go hashtag you go know, ripped and lean 2018 hash hashtag uh uh f you know i don't even know work never stops work don't stop 2018 work don't stop 2019 something like that whatever you guys whatever you guys want just put 2018 in it 
and uh, you know I'll go through like them and uh, I might even give you give you a little little like a little heart you know and I'm saying like a pause heart you know what I'm saying because like I, I love that you commented but I don't you know what I'm saying not like that you know what I'm um, that's all that love goes to Tina you know what I'm saying but anyway thank you guys uh, for making it this far I appreciate every single one of you 2019 we're coming in hard we're coming in fast we're coming in ripped we're coming in stronger oh man it's gonna be so good alrighty guys talk to you in the next one peace, peace.